All right, in the second part, we are actually going to look at um, the panels and how to create a series of panels with the folding um, angles that we have created. And I'm going to um, actually use the graph mapper tool uh, to, um, to kind of uh, control the folding of these panels. So uh, the first step is uh, since uh, we have uh, this code, I'm actually going to switch to the perspectival view. Um, here is my construction. So I'm going to hide some of the geometries that we don't need to see. I'm also going to hide this construction here, but this was uh, where I left off, right? So we have um, basically um, a system that rotates, but we also need to uh, fix this to some maximum angles. So let's say our angles go all the way up to 80 degrees, right? So this is the maximum folding angle that we have. So zero is closed, 80 is the maximum. Uh, fold. Um, now we can actually create a series of these uh, operations. So remember that we had uh, we started with a point and a height. So if I'm push this towards the right, I can basically create a series of uh, vertical panels. So um, let's attach a series here, and let's say we want twenty panels, and now we need to define. Uh, the width of each panel, I'm going to use one, uh, actually let's do 1.0. So we're going to start from the origin, but we want to create uh, 20 panels. And these are going to be, uh, if you look at the corner system, I need these to work in the Y direction, All right? So we have 20 panels now, each of them have a height of four and each of them are working with the fold. Now let's see the panels. Um, in real life. So I have the width here. This is going to be my panel width. These are the number of panels. And we need a folding angle, right? So this is going to be the height. And this is the fold angle. So these are our parameters. So I'm going to do an extrusion here and the extrusion will give me the surfaces of the lines. So uh, both of them are going to be extruded. So um, we can actually extrude them in the Y direction. Um, if you have a gap between these panels, we can actually include in our construction. But since I have the panel width here, I'm going to use this as my extrusion uh, value. So this is the top part and this will be the bottom part. So these surfaces are um, my folding panels. So I'm going to hide uh, these and I'm going to hide the um, the point evaluations as well so that we look at the system. Now let's play around with some parameters. So once we uh, move uh, the system, you can see that it's uh, opening and closing. That is working fine, we can actually add or remove some panels. And we should be able to control the width of these panels. There we go. So the, um, the division of the panel is at the midpoint, I'm not actually going to change it. Uh, if we change this calculation, then the trigonometric functions do not work properly, maybe we can do a more complex uh, or advanced version of it uh, later. Um, but I'm going to keep the construction to be at the midpoint and start at 45 degrees. So um, if you look at the example, uh, we actually see that the folding angles start uh, from a high value, then they decrease and then they go to the maximum value, right? So there's some sort of a, some sort of a curve here. And in order to get this sort of series of values, we can um, use graph mapper, which is a really essential tool. So um, the way graph mapper works is uh, basically you can feed it um, any type of um, numeric values and it will uh, basically get the corresponding value with a graph. Um, so let's uh, think about it this way. Um, this is the y direction, this is the x direction. So if I supply, let's say 0 0.5, it will intersect the curve, the graph, uh, with that parameter in the x direction, it will give me the corresponding y value. 
So since I have a line that is almost following a function of x equals y, I'm getting the same value here. But if I change the angle or the points, then we get a different value, right? So the idea here is that uh, we need to do this for the number of panels we have. So I need to supply 20 incremental values and I want to get here some sort of um, a continuous uh, parametric flow so that we can control how much each panel is going to fold. So uh, we can actually do it by using range because we have a fixed uh, width or interval for the x dimension. And if I supply 20, we get uh, 21 values because range divides an interval into equal segments. So here I'm going to write a simple expression and call it x minus one. And once we supply this, we actually get the same amount of uh, values for um, the panel, uh, panel size, right? So we have 20 panels, so we get 20 parameters. Now, each of these are going to be corresponding with the folding angle, right? So what I want to do is use this normalized interval of zero and one and map it onto some folding angle. So my angles are here. Um, so what I want to do is use this almost like a coefficient, right? So uh, like a percentage. So we can actually do a multiplication here. And uh, since this is zero and one, this will be my maximum folding angle. And if I multiply these, now we can get the rotation uh, factor for each panel. So the first panel will rotate 12 degrees and the last panel will rotate 35 and everything else uh, will be linearly interpolated. So if I connect this, um, now you can see um, the expression of the graph and the falling angle. We start from zero and go to 45. Uh, and if I increase the angle, you can see it's actually folding more, right? So this is controlling the maximum folding angle, whereas the graph is controlling the interpolation of the panels. So uh, let's look at our example. This was actually doing some sort of curvilinear um, interpolation. So we can actually achieve this by using uh, another function uh, like, let's try um, sync function. We can actually uh, now control the, um, the folding of it more asymmetrically, right? So we can actually make it um, go up in the middle and something like this maybe. Right, so here, the first value is kind of, uh, this, this curve is actually corresponding to how much fold we want to, uh, we want to make uh, per panel. And if our peak value is close to the top, then that, those panels will be almost uh, folded uh, 80 degrees. Now I'm going to make this a bit more smoother uh, so I'm going to increase the number of panels, but reduce the panel width. So I'm going to make this uh, 0.5. I'm going to make this uh, 40. You can see that it does this smoothly because we are uh, calculating how many uh, points we need for the range to evaluate the graph mapper and the folding angle controls uh, the overall interpolation of panels. So there you go. Um, I only made the surfaces, but technically speaking, uh, you can actually offset these surfaces or uh, build some panels inside of them. Um, we can actually um, try to uh, make it a simple uh, example. For instance, since I have surfaces here, let's try uh, to offset and make this type of hinged, uh, hinged profiles. Uh, but technically speaking, if the folding angle is in the uh, in the middle, then we need to offset the surface in both directions, but then we need to incorporate some details. If I uh, offset the panels outwards, uh, then you would see the hinge here, but the panels will be extruded um, in this direction, right? So there are, there are a few things to consider uh, once we are trying to make frames here. Uh, but let, let me show you how you can approach this uh, task. I'm actually going to um, work with a single surface. So you can just do list item here. And uh, you can basically 
get the wireframe of the surface. So you can uh, do wireframe, boundary representation wireframe, and you can do join curves. Now this would be a single curve. Now what I want to do is offset curve. So we want to offset this curve um, inward. So we need to enter some value. Let's call it uh, 0 0.05. And we need this to be a negative expression, right? So here I'm going to type in negative X. So there's our frame and um, we can actually do a few things. We can loft the outer boundary to the surface and then extrude it, or we can do a boundary surface. Um, so either option would work, but um, first we need to actually try if this offset works for all the surfaces, right? So remember that I am only doing it for one. So if I feed this in here, you can see the wireframe is actually working on all of those. Now we have two sets of curves that we need to connect. So we have the joint curves here, and the offset curves. Um, this is how I do it. We can actually weave this information to groups of two. And you can do boundary surfaces to get um, those frames. Now, if you want to give thickness to this, you actually need to know the um, extrusion direction. Um, or you can do offset surface, but uh, you need to probably uh, use another plugin for Grasshopper. But if you want to get the extrusion direction for these, there's another way you can do it. Uh, we can basically get the normal directions of each of these surfaces. So you can first do the areas of the surfaces. Surface closes point. So we can look at um, the UV uh, parameter of those points. And then once we evaluate the surfaces along these surfaces, these points we get these frames so my plane display size is huge right now so let me actually tune it down a bit to 2.2 yeah so the z direction here let's actually look at it so i'm going to do vector display these are my normals these are my points so they're facing inward right now. So we basically need to make them face outward. So I can do reverse. So we reverse the vectors. And now we basically have the extrusion direction for these frames. So all I have to do is extrude. Uh, but here we have to be careful because here the data is grafted. So we have um, 80 surfaces, but here we have 80 individual vectors. So if you want to extrude these boundary uh, boundary frames, you need to basically graft this data here too, so that they would actually um, work the same way. Oh, but, but we haven't specified the magnitude. So you can see now they're huge, they're all thick. So we can actually do vector amplitude here. And let's do 0 0.05. And if I plug this in, that should do it. So now we are hinging at these falling angles. And we basically have some uh, frame thicknesses as well. Uh, so these will be my frames. So let's do a custom preview here. So these would be, um, let's give it some color with a color swatch. Let's make these kind of black. And I'm going to get the offsets and make them into individual surfaces and make it into another lighter color. So let's make them kind of bluish tones. All right, so there you have it. So I'm going to hide all of these. And that will be our folding, um, folding panel system, uh, folding window panel system. So let's actually play around with it a bit more. So I'm actually going to 
reduce the falling angle, everything will be closed, of course. I'm going to keep it at 80. But if you play around with this undulation, you can see the system is responding really well. And we can also control the number of panels. And we can control the height of the system as well as the panel width. Right, so everything is built parametrically. So um, I hope you like this tutorial. If you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, it helps me a lot. And um, if you like this content, please hit the like button as well. And if you want um, any other uh, content to be covered, please let me know in the comments below. And uh, thanks for watching.